Researchers have helped a 38-year-old to regain natural control over his paralyzed legs and restored movement in his lower limbs after he had suffered a bicycle accident that caused a spinal injury. The participant, Gert Jan, can now stand upright, walk freely and even take the stairs. They developed a brain-spine interface technology that transforms Gert Jan's thoughts into action. By placing electronic implants in the volunteer's brain and spinal cord, neuroscientists and neurosurgeons have developed a wireless digital bridge to re-establish the communication pathway between his brain and his spine. The participant says that he is glad he can now enjoy the simple pleasures of casually sharing a beer with his friends while standing at a bar. This device was also found to improve overall neurological recovery as the participant was able to walk with crutches, even when the implant was switched off. Gregor Cortin from Switzerland was the lead author on the study and collaborated with researchers from France, Netherlands, Switzerland, UK and the US. Their findings were published on 24th May in Nature. A spinal cord injury interrupts the communication pathway between the brain and the neurons located in the lumbosacral spinal cord that is responsible for controlling walking. This can lead to permanent paralysis. Researchers have also previously demonstrated how electrical stimulation targeting the lumbosacral spinal cord restored basic walking and standing functions in people with paralysis. However, this process required wearing motion sensors to understand the intentions of the movement, while in this new novel case, a direct connection in the form of a digital bridge has been developed. Moreover, in those cases, patients showed limited ability to adapt leg movements to changing terrains and demands, and the movement was also not as natural. But this time, this digital bridge has been developed to connect the brain and the spinal cord to enable communication and restore a more natural functioning in the limbs of the patient. The participant wears a headset embedded with two antennas to make sure the implants stay connected. One antenna powers the implant while the other transfers signals to a processing unit which generates online movement signals. The decoded motor intentions are then turned into commands which are transferred to a software program on the same processing unit. The authors implanted the WIMAGINE, the Wireless Implantable Multi-Channel Acquisition System for Generic Interface with Neurons, devices above the region of the brain that is responsible for controlling leg movements. The device is a 64-channel wireless implantable recorder that measures electrical activity. It becomes invisible once implanted in the skull. Another neurostimulator was placed over the region of the spinal cord that controls leg movement. The researchers then used adaptive artificial intelligence methods to understand movement intentions and decode it in real time. These intentions then electrically stimulate the spinal cord in turn activating leg muscles to achieve the desired movement. Across 40 sessions of testing the BSI, the participants showed improvements in all the conventional clinical assessments conducted by physiotherapists. From as early as the first session, he was able to move his hips. Over time, he was also able to move his hip, knee and ankle joints. Later on, the participant was able to initiate stepping movements or walking continuously. The researchers also developed a system that Gert Chan could individually use at home as well. They created a walker with the case comprising all the components of the BSI. The participant is now able to interact with the software and conduct the stimulation on his own. As promising as these results may seem, the effects of the BSI system still appear to be very localized as it has not been tested on any other part of the spine yet. Moreover, it has only been tested on just one person so far. But the researchers are very positive about their findings. They say that in the future, a comparable strategy could be implemented to restore arm and hand functions as well. Several developments will be required to scale up the digital bridge but it is possible for it to be applied to other clinical conditions, such as paralysis due to stroke. For the print, this is Gaurvi Narang. For more, 
log on to the print.in and follow us on our social media handles.